Hey, good morning, guys. We are going to be doing this in two parts. Doodle and then paint. Let's see how it goes. Good morning and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I'm here with a fun doodle and painting project. We're going to be doodling this little lantern with pretty little branches. Fun doodle makes a beautiful little card just as it is. But then you can do this where you transfer this design onto a piece of black watercolor paper mixed media paper, cardstock, construction paper, just something dark. It could even be a really dark blue if that's what you've got. The, um, then we're going to paint it with gouache, which is an opaque matte paint. It's just like watercolor, but it is not transparent when you paint with it a little bit thicker. You can take dark colors, put them down, and put light colors over the top. That's how I got this beautiful lighting effect where it really looks like it's glowing. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Stick around because that's going to be in the second half of the lesson. I'm excited. I hope you are. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I am really, really happy. We are going to be doing this first with just pen, pencil, paper. Now I am going to do it on a piece of watercolor paper, but you could, because I'm just going to freehand. Oh no, I need to show you how to transfer. Mm, maybe I need to do this on some thin paper. I'll just tear a piece of paper out of my, out of my cheap sketchbook. That's why you have a cheap sketchbook. It's because you don't mind tearing sheets of paper out of it. I've done that already. See, it's splitting out here at the back. Just go look for a spot where there's a piece of paper. No big deal. Don't be flustered if you have to tear something out. It's okay. All right. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for sharing and for subscribing. I am so excited. I just hit 91,000 subscribers. And that's because you guys are sharing my channel, sharing the videos with your friends, and just having fun and coming back. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put these things to the side. We'll talk more about this in a few minutes. And we are going to doodle. Let's zoom put the zoomer way out of the way. There we go. Oh, and we are going to, uh, the painting at the end, that's going to be something similar to this is going to be a giveaway. So stick around. I'll start giving you the giveaway, um, link in just a couple minutes. All right, let's get this zoomed in and focused. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Whoops, that's not focused. What happened? I was focused. And now click the autofocus. Turn it off. There we go. All right, so we're going to do this, and it's going to be a fun doodle. The thing that I want to show you is you can do this in portrait or landscape. I'm just going to lay it in landscape because it's easier to show you on this piece of paper. And I want to end up with something that's around this size. So about, so right in there. This doodle is for today's fun, easy lesson. Sorry about the, the putts in here. I'm putzing. It's just one of those days. Okay, we'll do it this way. I am going to go in. I'm going to do it with a pen. You can do it with pencil first so that you can get your layout the way you want it. I'm just going to show you we can do it with pen. I am going to go in and make a circle. 
That's the center bulb, glass ball of my lantern. Now you see how we have this area for light to hit. We're going to draw that. Basically, we're doing like a double, um, like a snow globe. You could do this as a snow globe. I'm going to make little parentheses lines. This is the top and the bottom. Could be a gumball machine. Yes, it could be a gumball machine. And then I'm doing the other side of that base or the top. And now I'm doing this quickly. You can take much more time. Like I noticed this is sort of off center. I can just go back in, add another line. It doesn't matter. This is your art and this is your doodle and this is your time to explore, to test, to see how things work and not get stressed out about it because what's there to be stressed out about? It's a, this is a torn out piece of paper from a cheap sketchbook and a pen. Now this pen, I love this pen. This is the eco pen. I'm not sponsored by them. They don't send me anything for free, but I love the eco pens. So there. A deep sea diver. Yes. Deep sea diver would work too. Then I'm going to put the area for the hook. Have you noticed that almost every single one of these shapes that we've put on right now has been almost exactly the same? It, they're pretty much all parentheses shapes, aren't they? A circle and a bunch of parentheses. That's all it is. You've been doing these since these shapes since you were four, three or four since you've got a pencil in, in your hand. I'm going to go ahead. Now, I didn't leave a space on my doodle for the hook. See how it's going right there? Let's zoom in. Let's zoom in. Make that bigger. And then we have to focus again. Go. This is a total no stress area. Absolutely. So I put like a little comma shape there and I'm just going to color it in. Look at that. Now you can't see the area that the hook is coming from and I'm going to go up and make my hook. So now it's got something to hang from. Go back, fix your lines the way you want them to be. There's nothing saying that you have to be perfect on your lines the first time. And you know, this could just be a colored in piece. The eco pens, the best do doodle tool ever. Absolutely. I love the flowiness, the, the, just the way the ink comes out of the pen and the fact that the ink is waterproof on watercolor paper. It uh, will smudge with water on the cheap, the cheap paper, but it won't totally bleed out. So, you know, it's okay. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. Thank you guys. All right. So remember to click that like button. <laughs> And share with me, what would you put inside of a snow globe? Because I'm thinking that this right here, as a lantern, it's beautiful, but it can be a snow globe. And so I was thinking of doing maybe a little series of snow globes for the uh, holiday seasons that are coming. You know, snow globes don't have to be just for Christmas. We could do Halloween snow globes or... Um, Thanksgiving snow globes. We could do uh, just summer, spring, fall, any of them. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and put the candle inside. Here, you know, instead of showing you the painting, let's show you the doodle. Let's see. I doodle, you doodle in your book. So there's the, 
See? Doing exactly the same thing without looking. But that's the, the fun of this. I'm going to put the candle inside. And I'm going to raise the candle up off the bottom just a little bit. Look at that. I'm putting a, I'm drawing a circle, but I'm not making it perfect and I'm letting it break. That makes it look like there's some shimmer. Snowmen, fairies. Oh, those are good things to put in. Snow globes on round wood ornaments. Absolutely. Oh, Christmas gnomes. Yeah. I've been doing gnomes on my channel for uh, pretty much since I've had a channel. Five years? Wow, it's my fifth anniversary this November. So this is basically just a long skinny rectangle because I'm putting a tall skinny candle in. It has a line going up for the wick. And then I'm going to make a small flame shape. And I'm going to put another line around it and maybe a third one. This has got a lovely big wavy around in there um, flame. The, oh, excellent. These are all great ideas, guys. Thank you. I'm going to make a little bit of wax spilling over the edge. See how that was? It's basically just a little, a little glump sitting off to the side. Put a little shadow under it. The light's on the top of it, after all. I was thinking that butterflies or um, maybe a little moth and a dra and uh, fireflies. I don't get fireflies where I am. I've seen them in real life. I went to some beautiful caves in New Zealand where they have glowworms. That was really, really cool. Bioluminescence is one of the most amazing things ever. All right, so now we've got our lantern. And I just realized I made this really big. This is the EcoPen. Yeah, you can read it better on this one. EcoPen comes in a tube. They are cardboard tubes. with a pen insert so it reduces the amount of uh, throw in the trash type of waste you can put the cardboard tube in the recycle bin you can also use it to uh, cut into pieces and make it into beads i haven't done that yet i just thought of that <gasps> because they're already little hard cardboard tubes Be you could uh, cover it with pretty paper and then cut it into pieces and make little beads that you could use for decorating books or making ornaments. Oh, so cool. <laughs> All right, we're going to put a couple little butterfly, butterflies, moths. It's nighttime or daytime because this is a daytime picture. We're on the white paper. I'm going to go ahead and right here, I am going to put my line for my, for my greenery. So I know where my little butterflies or or moths are. And I think I want one right here. Now my butterfly moths, these guys are super, super simple. Basically, we're going to put a line and we're going to start at that line. We're going to go out and come all the way back and then go out and come back. So we're making two teardrop shapes basically. And then you can decide how you want your other side to look. It's not, um, it's not rocket science guys. It's actually quite fun to make up your own butterflies and moths. I'm putting a little outline on it. You could doodle inside the, the uh, wings. It's, ah, it's so much fun to make up, make up your own little worlds here. I'm going to put a little tiny one 
right up here. Sometimes I don't even put the little center for the body. But these are basically your little butterflies that you did when you were a kid, right? Sometimes I do put the center. Sometimes I'll put a head too. And then we go out and back, out and back. Oh, look, this one's got uh, bigger wings on the bottom. See? Just sweet little things. We're doodling. We're, we're taking the pressure off of ourselves. By doing this, you give yourself permission to be creative, to play with where your lines go. Ooh, look at that. That one, the lines got really big. Hmm, no big deal. Oh yeah, and the big tube. It is perfect for holding your paintbrushes. And it does stand. Um, what I would do, because it's a little bit tall, is I would maybe drop a few um, metal washers into the bottom to give it a little bit more weight and it will make it so that it doesn't feel quite as tippy. You were never a kid. Okay, so that's, I'm so glad that you're finding your, your kidness now. Finding your creativity because your creativity is amazing. See? There. It looks like one of those little scribble, the little scribble type drawings. I like those ones where they sort of go around and around a few times on things. It makes it feel a little more energetic. I love all kinds of pens and pencils. I'm going to go ahead and put the little leaves on as, or actually, let's see what, how long, Ooh, we've been in 17 minutes. I think I'm going to go and get the link for today's giveaway. So that way you guys can do this. Pringles cans, potato chip cans. Yes. Those work really well to hold brushes. And there we go. Today's word is positivity because I am positively filled with positive energy right now. And I've only had one sip of coffee. I have, Ooh, maybe I'll have a sip of my coffee. Yes. Clip, um, uh, click on the link, fill in the form and make sure to put your first name, your last name and the word of the day, positivity. You do need to be here to get the link because we only give out the link during the actual live show. But if you have to leave before the end of today's show and you already put in your uh, entry, you're in. You don't have to be present to win, but you have to be present to get the link. There we go. Uh-oh. Hey, guys, I need people to tell me if I have frozen for sure or if I've come back. <laughs> All right. Hydro dipping. Oh, that's something that I'd like to try doing sometime. See, there's so many projects I would love to try to do. Now, that shape that we did on the butterfly, we're going to use it to make the leaves. See? Butterfly wings and leaves can be the same shapes. And it all just depends on how you, how you use them. If you stack them up like this, they become leaves. All right. Oh, great. I'm glad that I'm back for you guys. So I'm just putting some leaves on. They can either be side to side or they can be staggered. 
These are kind of like hearts, aren't they? You could say they are hearts. You just doodle those leaves on. However they make you happy. If, you, if it makes you happy to go down one side and then come back and do the other side, do it. Oops, sorry. See? If you want to, you can stick another leaf in here and there. Remember, doodling, you start out with an idea, and then you can develop that idea further. Maybe I want a couple leaves that are sticking in underneath. Ooh. They get really full. If you did our underwater, this is very much like the underwater plants that we did also. Um, so if your sound isn't in sync, I'm trying to look and see if my sound is in sync when it comes up. So just a second. I'm going to put on headphones so I can hear. Okay, so it looks like it's in sync for me. So what I would say is uh, go completely out and come back in. So go out of the browser, restart your restart the session um, in a new browser window and see if that does it because it looks like it's working for me. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and just keep putting leaves on however you want to put them on. Now, we're going to finish this doodle. I will not be using every line that I put on here for my, for my painting because I will just put the leaves in with paint. I'm not going to draw every line when I transfer the design, but you can. You can certainly use every line. You can draw it with pencil. You can do a whole pen drawing. You can do it on white paper with the gouache also. The lighting effect isn't as, um, isn't as eye popping because having the black pa black background, but if you don't have black paper, you can take your gouache and paint black. I, or you can use uh, watercolor and paint your background in with dark colors and then use your gouache over the top of your watercolor. There's so many things that you can do. Oh, if you are new here, guys, thank you and welcome for showing up to the show. And uh, yeah, we're going to have fun here. We're going to paint light with gouache. And really, painting light with gouache is so easy and so fun. You can do this painting with uh, acrylic paint also. Cool thing about gouache is that you can soften and blend a little bit more than you can with acrylic just because acrylic once it's dry it's dry gouache is like watercolor in that it will re-wet and you can continue to blend see look at that oh this is turning out to be so cute Now I am going to show you how to transfer using the Soral, um, yeah, I've got it right there, the Soral uh, transfer paper. But you can transfer using chalk, or you could just draw with chalk on the black paper.
yeah, I don't know uh, what was going on with that. Um, the YouTube may have been having an issue because from my side, it was sending just fine and it never, um, it never froze. And looking at the uh, playback window in my behind the scenes, everything looks like it's going well also. Look. Oh, so cute. All right. I think I want to put dots in those wings. And something else you can do to start making it a little bit more detailed on your doodle, if you just want to do the doodle and not go in and do the painting, I understand. Sometimes we don't have an hour to play with a full doodle and then going in and painting it. And sometimes we do. Today I have the time. The painting isn't going to take very long. You'll find that with your pen and ink, you can get a lot more, uh, a lot more detail, a lot more quickly. Let's see. I think I want a leaf popping up right there. Another one here. Let's see, doodles. And one of the ways that you give shape to your leaves is the direction of the center vein. So if I want it to really look like it's flipping out, I'll curve my line. It gives it a little bit more shape. If I go straight, it looks like it's maybe uh, tipping downwards a little bit more. It gives them a little more shape and a little more definition if you are curving that line. I like adding the little dot. You don't have to. It's just what I do. Can you guys believe that August is almost over? And I've only gone camping once. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll talk more about the gouache paint in just a minute when we start using it. And if you have just come in, the link, oops, there it is, the link for today's giveaway, which is going to be the actual painting that we do in the class today, is in the chat right now. And like I said, you can only get the link during the chat. So you do need to be here to get the link, but then you don't have to be here to win. I know that many people have to go off and do other things. So there you go. And today's word is positivity because we are building a culture of, we, we have a culture of positivity in this group. And I want to spread positivity around the world. I think that we have a great opportunity to, when we're all together like this, when we're all positive and we're all working towards being positive people, we have um, that positive energy. I do believe that positive energy is a real force in the world just like negative energy, but positive energy makes people feel good. And that's my, my goal here. I like to make people feel good or give people the opportunity to feel good if they choose. I'm not going to make anybody feel anyway. <laughs> you can feel however you want to feel, but I'm going to give you all the opportunity I can to feel good and to feel creative and to feel happy about making art, making something that never existed before. This little drawing, this doodle, never existed before. Whenever you doodle, you're creating something new. You're creating something that has never existed. 
even if you've doodled the same thing over and over and over, it's never the same thing because it's a new drawing. It's a new doodle. And every time you flip a piece of paper over, you're doing a new drawing. Like attracts like. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So I think I'm going to go down here on the base and I'm going to put some little hash lines just like this. Maybe a few little lines coming up the edge, but as, as you can tell, the, the lantern is lit. So this front and the right here, that would be getting light on it. And so would this one up here. So the above it is falling away from it. So just like that, see how there's light here and light there. Yeah but it's darker up above and away. A little bit darker out on the edges. This is basic shading. This is not, this isn't hard. This is, you know, look at things and see how light is on them, but don't worry about making your shading perfect. Just putting a few little indications following the shape. Look at that. It gives you that feeling that this is round and it's got some depth to it. So let's zoom out. All right. So this is when it's done in landscape. This is when it's done in portrait. And I actually think that I would have another branch coming down and another butterfly or two or moth or two. I'm not going to detail these guys in. I just want you to see that just because I did everything up high, I can still drop down and give it more shape. See? So that's how you do that. Uh, easy peasy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, you know what? Yeah. Me being who I am, I'm going to have to. Really quick. <laughs> Let's get the... Let's get those on there. I, I need to finish. Um, that is something about me guys is that I, I'm a finisher. If it doesn't feel right, I will continue going until it feels right. And that's the thing also with doodles. Do it till it feels done to you. Do it till it feels finished or do it till you're tired of it. We have so many people in our group that are doing amazing doodles. Oh my gosh. If you are interested, we do have a Facebook group and a Facebook page. And when you join the Facebook group, you do have to answer all three questions. I ask that you do that just because it, re it keeps track. And if I let you in and you say you're going to follow the, the instructions, the directions, the rules, there it is, the rules, the guidelines for the group, um, and then you don't, I can call it back up and send you a copy of your answers that said that you would. That's all, you know, and just gently remind you. Um, I haven't ever had to gently remind anybody in a, well, actually I have but it's been a long, long time. So there we go. See, again, I had to finish. There we are. All right. Fun. What do you think? So half an hour, you have a beautiful card that you could send to somebody. Now we're going to tra transfer this onto a piece of black watercolor paper. 
I didn't even know that watercolor paper could come in black until just recently. And what I found, there's a couple different companies that make black watercolor. I bought this one off of Amazon. It's the Legion 140 pound or 300 GSM 8 by 10 paper. And it is a acid free 100% cotton. So it's really nice. And it's, it's, it's not that expensive when you are cutting the paper down. 8 by 10 I have a 5 by 7 and 3 um, where'd it go? Where'd they go? And I also made 3 ATC card size from, from the scraps and a little tiny piece for like sampling or just as a tuck in to um, an envelope. It's nice when, even if you're just writing a regular letter, if you have little cards, little pieces of paper that you can do a butterfly and just tuck it in, it makes it really special. Now I'm going to grab the, <clears throat> the Sorol. This is a wax free transfer paper. It's not going to interfere. It's kind of like a chalk that's been put onto paper. And I'm going to grab the yellow. See, I've used it many, many times. And my husband's used it a few times too. <laughs> so it gets, you know, it's, you can use it many times. You can just, you, I bought this sample pack like two years ago and hardly, hardly any of it's gone. Now I am going to put just a tiny bit of tape just right here to keep it from slipping. And I am going to do this right here like this, this like this. Uh, this is uh, going to be a lot of fun. So I am taking some tape and holding down my doodle. Now I'm going to draw right on top of this. If you do a fun doodle that you really, really love, take a picture of it and print out the picture and trace on the printer paper. Then you're not tracing on your original, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but I'm also not going to draw every single line. I do want you to see that um, you can get this on here quickly. Get that focused and turn off the autofocus. There we go. I have, um, this is just a hard lead. It's, I'm not even sure what the, what the lead is. I think it's just HB and I'm going to get my basic shapes on. I don't need to transfer everything and I don't have to push super, super hard. So let's, let's see. How's that going? Ooh, see, transferred just fine. It doesn't matter if this piece of paper underneath shifts. It's the top one that I'm worried about. So I'm going to go ahead and say, there's my candle. There's my flame. I'm not too worried about making it perfect. And if my lines go off, it's no big deal. I'm painting over the top of it. These are guidelines now. So you just give yourself a quick trace. Tracing is not cheating. You learn how things are put together when you trace. Actually, one of my uh, favorite tips is to print out your photograph. If you're going to be um, doing a picture of something real that you want to make sure is real, trace on the pic trace directly on the picture to get your hand to know how the the thing is put together say you're trying to learn to draw it draw it right on top of whatever it is you learn how it gets put together that way i am going to go ahead i like the shape of my vine so i'm going to go ahead and give me my shape 
and I can feel that I'm actually going off the edge of the paper and that's okay. That's actually kind of cool. I like it when things kind of go off and then come back on. And then my butterflies and I'm only going to do the inside of the butterflies, the inside part of the wing because I don't need all of that yellow stuff on my paper. There's one up here. You can change the shapes. They're probably going to change when I put the paint on. All right. Yes, you build muscle memory. And look at that. We've got our basic design all transferred. We're going to take this one out of the way. Now on my website, I do have on my templates and uh, patterns page, I do have the one that was in my sketchbook, the slightly smaller that you can print out and you can trace it. If you just want to get to the painting, there's a traceable already there for you. Yeah, well, see, I, I drew in pen, so I traced with pencil. I could see where, where my lines were, but that's a really good tip is to trace using a different color than what you drew with. And then I always put my, my tracing paper back into the transfer paper, back into the package. And the uh, Sorrel transfer paper is listed in my Amazon store under the drawing tools. So if you are interested in supporting my channel, I'm going to do my commercial now, guys. <laughs> I have the Do the Doodle t-shirts. The uh, Up at the top of the chat, there's a pinned post. And it's the direct link to the Do the, do the Doodle. And uh, that's on Teespring. I have a whole bunch of different products on there. I've got masks and shirts and bags and and uh, pillows and phone cases, <laughs> you know, all the things. Then I also do have affiliates with Amazon and with Arteza, Arteza. So I'm going to be using the Arteza paper, a uh, paper, the Arteza gouache paint. I have a piece of that um, coral plast. I'm going to use that as my palette. I have white, scarlet red, sap green, lemon yellow, and ultramarine blue. So I'm just going to, to give myself some squirts out here. I might do a couple spots of white. I'm not sure. I don't need to use a lot of white for this particular painting. Oh, and then I am going to, let's see. Oh, that's me, the webcam. Where is it? I have, oh, I'm in the wide view. That's why that's been so weird. I've been in the wide view all this time. All right, so I'm putting the paint down. I do have a palette cam this time. So, yellow, scarlet, the scarlet is more of a, it's, it's kind of a warm, red, but it's slightly cooler than vermilion. And you know, of the colors that I have, yes, big, huge shout out to all the nurses, all of the frontline people that are helping to keep us healthy and safe. My mom was a um, registered nurse and worked in um, many different departments in the hospitals. She worked in um, the emergency room for several years. She worked in um, the ICU and the CCU. 
so intensive care and critical care. She was an IV therapist, so she would be the one going to rooms and starting IVs. She, oh, all, all the things. Wow, that white is really, there's white right here. There's white. Whoops. Get that back in, get that back in its location. So there's white, sap green, scarlet red, lemon yellow, and ultramarine, ultramarine blue. And I'm going to put some tape to keep my palette from shifting. I'm going to use... I'm going to start off with this lovely number 12 round brush. I don't have a, whoops, sorry. This is a new, a, a new setup for me right now. And I'm going to be moving the palette cam up, <laughs> hanging from the ceiling. So I don't bang into it anymore. All right, I am going to have my water sitting up over to the side. And we're just going to start putting all of our little things in. Maybe we'll zoom out on that one just a smidge. There we go. And since this is going in as a Guys, I gotta go down. <laughs> My paper towel just dropped. Ah. Poof. Hair all over the place. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't do my hair, guys. You know, it's like my hair is, I put it in a bun last night, so I got a tiny little bit of curl in it, but you know, not much. I've got such straight hair. I wanna go ahead and get my lantern started up first. So I'm going to, my brush is wet. I'm getting white, white on a white palette. So yeah, you can't hardly see it. Filling up my brush and I am going to go ahead and the thing that I want to be completely white is the candle. And look at that. This is white gouache going on to black paper. <laughs> so cool. I am going to go ahead and put some white into my butterfly wings that are facing the light. So I'm thinking about this, you know, the black is the background. So I don't have to go in and paint anything in the background. I'm not too worried about making it perfect. Right now I'm putting that light in just so that it will remind me that that's the edge where the light is on this. And you can go to a smaller brush. You don't have to use the big, huge brush. This one does go to a nice point. So you see how this wing is closer to the lantern these wings and that side there closer to the lantern. So where it's closer to the lantern, I'm going to make sure that I've got more light. This one, I'm going to say he's farther down in a way. Just looking up at the, looking up at the monitor, looking up at you guys. You guys are so awesome. Thank you so much for all of the love and care that you show to each other. Oh, and remember, if you have just walked in and you haven't already entered for this exact painting that we're doing right now, click on that link that just went up in the chat. See this one, the bottom. Okay, my, it feels like it is not staying focused. And then it feels like it's going on to, there we go. There, now it's staying focused. Um, 
it was like going back and forth. Now I'm going to turn this around. So this bottom, I said petal, the bottom wing right there is closer to the light. And this part of the wings closer to the light. This little guy, I'm going to, I'm going to say that he's almost completely out of the, out of the light and just give him a couple little bits just for me to remember. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the paper is so nice. It is, um, I will make sure that I've got, I don't know that I have it in my art, in my Amazon store yet, but if you click on my Amazon link and then do a search for the Legion Stonehenge black watercolor paper, I'll still get credit even if it's not in my store. Yes, this is accessible later. This video lesson stays up forever. I have lessons that are on my, on my, um, on my channel that have been around for five years. And I'll say some of those are a little bit painful for me to watch, but they're still good lessons. And it's amazing that I have people that are still going and watching them. I'm going to go in and take some lemon yellow and sap green. I'm going to mix up a little bit of a different green, maybe a touch of ultramarine blue in it too. Ooh. And that's the thing that we're going to have to deal with is the glare. Ah, okay. So what do I need? I need something underneath. Ooh, eraser. That help? I think that helped. All right. And now I'm just going to go in and start putting some leaves in and I'm not drawing them, but I'm letting the, the brush do the work. So I'm actually starting out at the tip of the leaf and coming back to where it's attached. And if it doesn't touch completely, it's okay. And you know, I am that person that sort of bounces around on a painting. So I might do these leaves Oh, gee, see, look, I just changed and the leaves aren't making me as happy out at the tip first and come back to the stem there that, that makes me happier. So go out to the tip of your leaf and come back to the stem. There we go. Oh, that makes me happier. And remember, this is the first layer. We can do layers here. And we can layer our light colors over our dark colors and our dark colors over our light colors. See? And you can go back in and fix leaves that didn't do what you wanted them to do. And the neat thing here is that we get all of that dark shadowing behind and I can go right over the, that, that wing right there because I can paint right over the top of it again. All right. And thank you guys so much for all of you around the world that are joining us. Thank you. Remember my intention is for my channel to hit 100,000 before Christmas, actually by November sometime, so I can have my silver play button for Christmas. 
My intention is to have my silver play button for Christmas. I know it's a little bit, um, self-serving, I guess, but you know what? Sometimes you have to make sure that the universe knows what it is you want. And I am going to go back in and put brighter colors closer to the lantern, but I'm going to get these leaves in first and then put the lantern in and then do the highlights. So it really doesn't matter what the green is right now. It just needs to be green. And yeah, I do. I continue to move it around because you need to work to your comfort, not putting yourself in um, uncomfortable positions. And then I'm going to switch and I'm going to have it coming, coming back. I do like working from the tip of the, the tip of the leaf coming back in squish and squish and pull these are super basic but they have such a lovely effect i really enjoy how gouache has this matte velvety type of texture you don't varnish gouache paintings you you um, frame them under glass with a spacer. So if you take it into somebody, they'll know how to frame it. If you do it yourself, just make sure and use a mat. See, so this got a really kind of gloppy up there. I'm not worried about it. We're going to go in and do some detailing after. But look at that. Quick and easy. And I am still just grabbing those colors. If you um, are really, you know, you don't have any materials, go to the dollar store and just get some of the kids poster paints to try it out. It's going to be chalkier, but it's not going to cost you a lot to just check it out and see. Now, gouache is not as ex as expensive or doesn't have to be as expensive. Um, I do have a coupon code for Arteza and it gets you an additional 10% off. So if they're running a sale and say their set of gouache is on sale already for 15% off or 20% off, you can get another 10% off your whole order with my coupon code that's down below in the more information box. So yeah, more commercials because I didn't finish when I did it last time. So anyway, more, more ways to support my channel. I do have a Patreon and I have a, a giveaway once a month. I'm actually going to do the drawing for the giveaway today for August and I'm going to be giving away three pieces of art that I have done this month to people on my Patreon. And all you have to do is be a paid at any level member of Patreon to be in those drawings. Okay. Like I said, I like to start at the end. I have to remind myself though, start at the end. That way I can get my leaves to overlap. I'm not worried about any particular green color here, just just getting them on, getting it on. The neat thing, you can let a gouache painting sit, come back to it 
and start painting on it again and you will reactivate the paint so if you are somebody who comes from an acrylic world it's something new for you because acrylic doesn't re-wet but gouache does see just saying mm, I like that and that's the thing is that you can just start laying them in so now we've got the leaves laid in I want to go ahead and put in the lantern I love my patrons I think that you guys are rock stars patrons um, actually help me get new products to try they help me to buy new equipment because I can save up the money uh, as things progress and we have more and more patrons when we hit 50 patrons we're going to do an eight hour patron party that's going to be a private live show that uh, patrons will be able to come in and go out and suggest things that we should do and we're just going to have fun and chat I have a um, second channel that is just for my patrons right now that is my community channel there's uh, only unlisted artwork videos over there and that's because they go for my patrons so thank you even on canvas it does not stay wet it can be re-wet so if you do this on um, like a canvas tote bag you'd want to do it with acrylic paint you can certainly do this design with acrylic paint on a tote bag so I'm looking at that and it looks like it's cut off funny I'm going to just add a little bit more of a leaf right there that makes me feel better <laughs> you know sometimes you have to do what makes you feel good guys yeah the patron party is going to be a lot of fun I might just get to the point here where I'm like uh, we we just have to do the patron party you know or do a patron party ahead of time so I'm putting yellow down and the yellow going down on the black paper actually looks kind of green but it won't when we're done I'm going to take a little touch of the scarlet and start making my inside of my flame see just like that no 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 muss no fuss this is really like doodling I'm going to take a tiny bit of blue with a lot of water and then take some white and we're going to start putting in the outside of our glass look at that and then I'm going to take a touch more of blue make it a little bit darker now doing this with the old you can do this with Prussian blue you can do it with phthalo blue um, I just liked how the ultramarine blue will mute the green some and then I'm going to take and put just around the very outside right over that yellow chalk line another little line there see and you can blend that out it doesn't have to be a harsh a harsh join look at that you can blend it out and I can take it right over my candle a 
Ooh, I can take even more white into it and I can give it some white highlighty bits. I can put a little more yellow into my white. Just going to be careful and take the yellow from the outside edge. And I can put yellow. I'm just layering up these colors and the light. Look at that. Getting some of that fun glow going. You can do this. Absolutely. If you take it across, you can get the feel of the glasses in front of it. And then, even though it's not a transparent media, if you go in with your wet brush, you can kind of lighten it and you can see, because we're working on a black background, you can smooth out. Look at that. Just like that. Maybe I want a little bit more of this, a little bit more orangey glow showing up in the glass. See? Super fun, easy. You can do this. Ah. Okay, so I could sit there and com continue to, to like fuss about with it. I do see that I want a little bit of the blue and, and the scarlet together. That makes my, my kind of dark gray ultramarine blue with the scarlet gives me not a perfect purple gives me more brickish purple color Let's see I'll show you or a gray that one's a little more pink than I want it ah there we go there I want to get this little darker color up here. Even darker. Now that I put white into it, it's a little bit less, um, less dark. Actually, I'm going to take a tiny, tiny drop of green. Boom. Makes it almost black. Put the shadow on there. I'm going to go ahead and paint the hook. And any of the, the color that's left can be wiped off with a damp brush. So if I end up not liking a line from the transfer paper, I can just wipe it out with a wet brush. Let's see. Need some some leaves that are like showing up in the background so that hook looks like it's attached to something. But the gouache, dark colors dry lighter, and light colors dry darker. Mm. 
You see a hummingbird? Oh, <laughs> the top of the transfer paper. Yeah, I I've done hummingbirds. I've done hummingbirds. A daytime picture of this with little pink flowers or something, that would be pretty with a hummingbird. All right, I'm going to get a brown tone made now. So I'm taking my scarlet and yellow to make more of an orange. And then I'm going to take just a tiny bit of blue See, we're really working with red, yellow, blue, a little bit of green, but it makes this real pretty kind of mahogany color. So I'm going in and putting the wood base that, or wood topper. You know, that's one of the things, how do you get in and put the candle in? I say this top here screws off so you can reach in and put the candle in and light the candle. And I put that color down here at the base also. If you have just come in, make sure to To click on the link to enter for this artwork. The gouache link. Um, oh, did I miss putting gouache in the, in the links? Just a moment. I will grab the link. Okay. So I have to go to a website and log in, log in, come on, there we go, and then gouache. And there we go. And the 24 set of gouache, copy that link. All right. So here is the affiliate link for the gouache. This is the U S link. If you need the Europe link, let me know. All right. So we're getting this on here. See, you can walk away, do something else, come back. I actually think I like that with the, the blue being added into the brown for the bottom of the base that's farther away from the light. See? And the coupon code is um, in the chat. I'm not saying it out loud just because the, um, the coupon code changes. This one's good through the end of September. So September 30th. Ooh, I like that. So we're getting that nice light. Turn that over. Put the dark on the top of the, the lantern. 
So I have to figure out the best way to do this so that we don't have the glare. I don't know how there's there there's magic that happens. go. And good morning to everybody coming in. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. For everyone who's been here since the beginning of today, thank you so much. I appreciate every single viewer, every single comment, every single subscriber. Let's see, we're going to make that a little bit brighter. Ooh, hit that with a little bit of light. See what I did there? I took a little bit of that scarlet with the yellow and I used more yellow to brighten it up. And I'm not making it a solid hard line of color. I'm actually letting it sort of skip. And that's part of painting light. Um, when you're closer to a light source, it's going to be brighter. As you go away from the light source, it's going to drift off or fall off. So really the light on the top piece is going to be brighter than down here because the candlelight is closer to the top. Thank you so much for being here from Australia. I mean, wow, twelve twenty in the morning, Tuesday. You are amazing, Leanne. Thank you for coming and sharing some time with us. Ooh, that's kind of pretty. A little bit of that bright scarlet. Maybe put, oh, I did just do that, didn't I? Need a little more yellow there. There we go. Yeah. See, don't, don't let it um, scare you if you put too much color in some place because you can always go over it. All right, we're going to get the butterflies, do the highlights on the leaves, and we will be done. These butterflies are going to be lovely, sort of pinky, peachy colored butterflies. I do need a little bit more yellow that's clean, doesn't have green in it. There we go. So get the color on here. These are butterflies or moths. It's nighttime, they're moths. When you're working with gouache, it can get a little glumpy in your brush. If you're used to watercolor, it is not going to be as smooth and flowy but you can add more water to your brush to make it more smooth and flowy. These are just quick butterflies. They are doodle butterflies and we are doodle butterflying with gouache and we are making them go in in such a way that they look like they're getting lit by the by the lantern. These could also be just flowers floating in the air. You know, you are the one in control and you're the one who decides what your, what your picture is all about. I just really enjoy doing things with gouache. See, you can just go out to the tip, just like doing the leaves, and pull in. 
I like having my brush not be completely mixed so it gives some variation to the uh, colors and to the butterflies. So setting down and pulling in towards the body, setting down, pulling in towards the body. Just like that. Sorry, my hand got in the way on that one. Now, right now, eh, it looks a little funny, doesn't it? I'm not too worried about it because you know what? This butterfly is becoming a fancy butterfly. That happens. Sometimes butterflies become fancier. And once you've worked on a butterfly for a minute or two, you're going to want to stop and you're going to want to give it a little bit of room to breathe. move on to another one or move on to something else in your painting that you want to do. So there, I think I am going to lighten up with white and yellow. See how that gives that little butterfly just that touch of glow from the candlelight. Just a touch. And you don't have to give every single detail to make it feel like there's light there. Actually nighttime you see less details in the night. So there we go. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Remember to click that like button and the notification bell. And remember that it's always free to subscribe to YouTube channels. Now, some YouTube channels do have memberships on the YouTube channel. Oh, that's sweet. We're going to go ahead and get some green going here. Wash my brush up. But on this nighttime card, look at that. So where you want to put the light, you want the light to be on the inside edge of your green leaves, right? So what we want to do is we're going to take a green and we're going to add a little bit of orange to it. So I need to make an orange, don't I? So I need some orange with a lot of yellow in it. Do you guys like the palette cam? I know it's a little bit glary, but you know, I don't know if that's something that you guys are enjoying. I will make sure to continue working it out. Then I'm going to take some green and you would think, ooh, green and orange, but it makes the most beautiful highlighty type of color. And shadowy type of color. So I'm going to put a bit of this showing up and then we could take it even lighter there we go 
and then even lighter just a tiny touch of green in it and lots of yellow there for our brighter bright bright the thing is is that you don't want it to be white but you want it to shine see how we're starting to get that lighter the lighter light you can even put a little bit of just yellow right on the tips closest to the closest to the candle flame So we're lighter on one side, darker on the other, and we can go in and just hit a few. See? And if you go in and do it where you're like the right side, the left side, you can even get that sort of center vein. Ooh. Okay, yeah, that's that's coming along. Yay. There we go. See, yeah, some, so I am going into that quiet place. When I was working on this, the original, I was doing it while well, sitting at, at my uh, campsite. It was so much fun. Oh, wow. How did I get, how did I get paint all over me? Yeah, guys, thank you so much. If you can't stick around, don't worry. Just make sure that you've entered for the contest. If you are interested in winning this particular painting, you do need to be present to get the link, but you do not need to be present to win. All right. So I'm looking at that going, I want some more green with a little bit of that blue to make it a lot darker. There we go. Because part of it is where you have light, you ha you need to have dark, right? So I'm just going to make a few of these little leaves darker on the back side. There we go. You can end up with a lot of texture in your in your painting with gouache. I like it. I like texture in my paintings. And if it's not working the way you want to, let it dry and then come back. You know, move to another area on your painting and then come back. Aha, that butterfly just ended up behind a leaf. That's something else. If you don't like something, it's kind of like when you're doing um, faces. And if you end up with a painting or see a painting where half the face gets covered with hair it's because somebody didn't like half the face and so they covered it with hair oops sorry see and you can just go back and 
grab some color. Oh, I'm just having fun layering this up now. You know, that's, that's what's going on here. So I'm just having fun. But as I'm doing, my light is next to my glass and the dark is as I'm going away. So this over here needs to be much darker out on the edge because it's not catching that light. So I'm just going to make it much darker. But I can leave a little bit of highlight. See? Just like that. And if you want to go in and smooth out a line, now this right here has gotten kind of gloppy because there was that curl. I am going to clean my brush. Yeah, it's going to be fun, guys. I'm, I'm going to be doing the drawing in just a couple minutes. So if you have not already entered... Whoops, wrong one. I have to go back and copy my copy my link. There we go. If you have not already, ah, first, if you haven't already entered, click the, click the link in the chat and make sure that you use the hi, the word of the day, positivity. <laughs> if you want to, you don't actually seal gouache paintings. You put them under glass. So just get yourself a little cheap frame that has a mat and pop it in there. The mat will separate the picture, the painting from the glass and give you that airspace that's needed. The link is in the chat. Yeah. So Liz, I hope you got the link. So I want a little bit more light over here. And I'm going to say there's some light. There we go. A little bit of dark. I see. That's how I'm getting the paint. I'm putting my hand in the palette. I'm going, how am I getting paint on my hands? go. So again, you can work this as little or as much as you want. I want some darker leaves right up here. So I just grab some blue. And that's the ultramarine blue with the sap green and the lemon yellow. But more of the blue. Ooh, there we go. Sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith. Put something on there. Oh, there's a tiny butterfly that I forgot. There needs to be brighter. I'm just kind of searching around now for color on my on my palette. Yep, the top moth is going to get colored. Thank you. So, top moth. Maybe maybe darker. A little bit darker here. Just I'm I'm searching around on my palette for for colors. This little moth. This little moth of mine. Put some color on it and let it shine. Aw. Let's see. Mm 
Hmm. You know this guy over here? I don't know. I don't know about that one. Neat thing about mobs is they have kind of that soft powdery powdery feel to them. A little bit darker on the bottom sides away from the light I see some leaves that I think I'm going to go boom see this is where this is where I get into the danger zone because I'm like, ooh, what if I put some more leaves there? What if I make it darker there? What if I put my palette through the or put my my painting through the palette? <laughs> Just putting a few more little dark leaves. Sort of getting a finished feeling over here because it doesn't quite feel finished there. There. A little bit brighter green. In a few spots. See, touches, just touches here and there. Makes it brighter, makes it darker. Makes it feel more jungly. Little bodies. A little bit of a body in there. Maybe a dot. I don't know. You know, that's, see, that's the thing is I'm like, ooh, what if I do this? What if I do that? Ooh, well, got to do that on the other side now. <laughs> All right, guys. The word of the day is positivity, and it's on the link. So, word of the day is positivity. Okay, we're just going to... Let's see, do I have my... Just cleaning up the tip. I'm going to give little... Little, weight, uh, little uh, antennas. Just like that. You can even use this. Eh, actually, yes, on the um, on the hook here. I am going to use this pen. This is the Signo Uniball UM153, and it gives me a nice little. Oops! Too much water on my brush. See, a little bit of color there, and you can actually work it in with water while it's still wet. So it's not so harsh. It's a pigment ink, so it will dry permanent. Let's see, a little bit more white on the front edge, just to brighten it up just a smidge more. It's not perfectly white. There's a little bit of that pinky, pinky peach.
do what makes you happy, what gives you, what gives you joy, and don't, don't worry about it being absolutely perfect all the time. There we go. All right, we are going to be, see, you can use the gouache. Give that little highlight. Just sometimes it's easier with a pen. That's the hook up there. Place for it to attach. I think I'm going to do something. We're, we're going to see how this works. I'm going to do where I take a little few little dots of the yellow. Especially down here. It's going to give it a few little dots of yellow here and there. Kind of like little fireflies. Some big ones, some little ones. You can make them perfect dots or you can just scatter them around. You, I could have splattered this before I started with white or yellow, make it look like stars or like the magical fairy dust. So are you guys interested in some snow globe uh, paintings? I know that I saw some, some really great ideas go by. I'm going to go back through the chat and write them down. Just sprinkled, sprinkled with fairy dust here, you know. There we go. Ah, uh, dragonflies instead. Yes, dragonflies are lovely. Um, on my, on my original, you see, I did have a dragonfly also. All right, we're going to put the cap back on this. I am going to sign it. Um, I think the signing is actually going to be done with the white pen. There it goes. I'm going to sign down here. And this is positivity. So there we go. All right. We're going to pop that off of that background so it makes it easier to see it. If the tape is sticking a little too much and tearing your paper up, now it, it just brought a little bit of fiber up with it. It's not too bad. But if it's if it's tearing your paper, hit it with the heat tool, hit it with a hair dryer, something that will soften the the uh, tape, soften the paint up, the paint, soften the tape up. Wow, my brain. <laughs> Get those things out of the way. We are going to do our giveaway. And let's see here. Actually, I think I'm going to pull this card off the background. So we have white. Ah, look at that. So now I can go back to desk wide view. There we go. And now we are going to get our, so we've had 29 responses. Wow. Create the spreadsheet. 
then go back and create. There we go. I'm going to hide your hide your email addresses. Then we're going to go to the random.org. Allow. We will do two. Actually, we'll do one through 30 so that we can Okay, I just realized that um, the paid my my browser page the microphone wasn't working, <laughs> so it was one through thirty, and I clicked on generate, and that was number twenty eight. So we're going to go back to that screen. It's not going to, um, it's not going to have the sound for some reason. All right, so Julie Schmidt, you're the winner. Number 28, wow, it's been picking really late numbers lately. Don't know, it's random. I don't, I did not pick the number and I didn't even look to see who was what number. So yay, Julie Schmidt, you won today's painting. So I will be sending you an email. Let's go to the wide view. I'll be sending you an email with a request for your mailing address. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I have a whole bunch of ideas for new things coming up soon. Next video is going to be Thursday, 8 a.m. Pacific time. And I'm not sure what we're going to do, but it's going to be fun. Do you guys, oh, question, question, since you're here, do you want more uh, gouache paintings, watercolor paintings, or would you like acrylic paintings along with the doodles? Not losing the doodles, guys. Or do you want some colored pencil and doodling? I'm up for all of it. I do have a new video that's going to be coming out in a week or two on something that I found in the cupboard that I didn't know we even had. Going to have to check that out when it comes up. Remember, guys, to go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye.